Hi, this is Tim Yu from Remax Real Estate Solutions. I hope you're doing well. Today is January the 19th, 2021. Today I'm going to be showing you a step-by-step -step process on how to claim your HST rebate for a brand new condo purchase that you're using as a rental from, the, from Revenue Canada that the developer has clawed back from you. So, you know, just as a disclaimer, this is not legal or tax advice. You know, you should seek the advice of your tax accountant and your lawyer uh, in case you have any further questions. I'm just showing you a method that I use and I've done and I've successfully, you know, I've successfully um, got the claim back every single time. So knock on wood that this, this time is the same. I've heard of people who have not got their rebate back and has, it has been refused. So you some unique cases with that. So again, I don't know what your situation is like, but this is the way I've done it and I'll show you how it's done. So let's get started. So HST rebate application for new construction purchasers using property as an investment. So what do we want to accomplish today? So we want to be able to fill out the two HST rebate forms and on there, I'm going to show you how to calculate the HST rebate amounts for net purchase prices under 350, from 350 to 450, and over 450. Um, that might not mean anything to you right now, but you know, if you're in following those ranges, you'll you'll know why I'm going to be showing you these calculations. And then finally, we're going to prepare and package everything and send it to Revenue Canada. You'll need the following: um, you'll need a calculator. You need to download the two HST rebate forms. They're in the link in the video link below. Um, you'll need a final statement of adjustments. You'll need your original purchase agreement. You know, if we bought this property as an assignment, you'll need the assignment agreement. And uh, you'll need a tenancy agreement with a minimum of one year term. You'll need a void check. And you'll, I also, I also uh, suggest that you throw in a cover letter. Last time I sent in my HST rebate, they rejected my application and all the documents were in there. The person on the other end who was reviewing it didn't look carefully enough, so that's why I always include the cover letter moving forward. So the statement of adjustments is one of the most important documents you'll receive from your lawyer. It basically breaks down all the costs that are involved in your purchase for your new condo. Um, this is prepared by the developer's lawyer and it's sent to your lawyer. Like Not all of them are, look the same, but uh, they all have similar information. Uh, I noticed in this, this uh, statement of adjustment that uh, the GST uh, is combined they typically break it down as federal and provincial, but in this case, they have combined it together. No problem for us. I'll show you how to use the calculation nevertheless. Um, so in this example, we're using John and Jane Doe, and they're buying 2101 15 Baseball Place. So I'll show you how this one is done. And as you can see, this one is, uh, the purchase price is less than 350,000. So the actual net purchase price is 260,000, 361, 21. So let's start with the form GST 524 Ontario rebate schedule. So you put your last name and then your first name. If there's more than one of you, don't worry, just put the one. Uh, if you have a business number, you can put your business number here. If not, just leave it blank. Um, if, you, if you don't know if you have a business number or not, if you claim HST separately, then you probably do. If, don't, if not, then you know, just leave it blank. So in section A, you know, they want to calculate the the provincial part of the HST. So as you saw here, the total HST was 33,846.96. Okay. So all you have to do here is you multiply this number by eight and then you divide it by 13 and then you'll get 20,828.89, eight rounded up to 90. So that's the number that you put here, okay, in A. And for B, you would simply just take this uh, net HST purchase price, which is a 260,361.21, and you throw that into here. You put the exact same number into C. And then for D, all you really have to do is take this number that you calculated, multiply by 0 0.75, and then you get 15,621.67, and you throw that number in here. Now we're done for this page. Next form. So the GST HST new residential rental property rebate application. This is the final application that you need to fill out. This is the final form that you have to fill out uh, in order to get your rebate. So as we discussed earlier, the business number, you can add this if you have one, if you don't just leave it blank. 
you must put in your social insurance number in this section here. Uh, the language, uh, you can select English or French. Uh, you can put in your name here, so last name, first name. If you have more than one person, uh, you can put the secondary name here. If you have more than two people, then you'll have to attach a separate sheet uh, if you need more space. This is your mailing address, the mailing address that you have uh, with Revenue Canada. So you put that information in here. So your Toronto, Ontario, your postal code. The contact person, you want to put uh, you as the contact person and put your phone number in here. And then section B is the property information. So this is the address of the property. Uh, with the postal code. So the relevant date um, from my last video, this is actually an edit that I'm quickly making. I had this backwards, so you'll notice that the dates have switched around. Uh, shout out to Selva for pointing that out to me. That was a mistake on my side. So the relevant date is actually going to be the closing date. So this is the date that you close. So we're putting 2021-0120, um, which you can get from your statement of adjustments here. And then uh, the other date is your occupancy date. So October 3rd, 2019. We put uh, October 3rd, 2019 into this uh, date section here. So next, okay. the legal description of the property. So where to get this information? Again, you go back to your statement of adjustments. Uh, if you look on the top here, it says TSCP 2823. So we put TSCP 2823 in here. The plan number. So it's the unit and the level, so unit 01, level 21. Again, you can get that information in here as well. So it's unit 21, level 01, all right? And then I, if for other, you can put your parking and locker information in here. So I put locker unit 85, level D. And again, I got that information from here. So locker unit 85, level D, all right? If you have a parking, you'll you can just put, uh, you know, parking, and then same thing, unit, you know, one, level, C, whatever, okay? So you could do that there. You can skip this mobile home section. So section C, you'll check off purchaser and landlord, all right? And then you'll have to fill in the purchase agreement date. So you need your original purchase agreement and find out what the date is. And you can find that simply on your first page of your purchase and sale agreement you'll see it's dated 28th of September, 2014. So this is when this property was purchased. So 2014, September 14th, we put that information in here. The type of construction is new construction. So we check off new construction. The type of housing, this is a condominium unit. So we're checking off condominium unit here. And then for section C, all you have to type check off is type six. So just type up type six. And then now we get into the calculations. So this is the calculation for the GST portion, which is the federal portion of the HST. So basically what we do is we go back into our statement of adjustments and get the 33,846.92. So 33,846.96. Uh, and then in this case, you multiply it by five and you divide it by 13. So you get 13,018.06. So if you go and see here, I put 13,018.06 in here, okay? So then the fair market value, again, we just take the same number, your uh, tax out price, or which is your net HST price, the 260,361.21, uh, we put that in B, and we put that into C as well, okay? And for D, what you do is you multiply this number that you got by 36%. So times it by 0.36. Whoops. 13.18.06. Multiply it by 0.36. And you get uh, 4,686.50 in my example. So you put that number into D. Okay. And then um, if the amount in B is 350,000 or less, then you just basically take the amount from line D. So this is three, le, the, this, this number is less than 350,000. So I simply just take this number and put it into E, okay? And then for F, I just take the number that was in E, put it into F, 
And then for G is I go back to my old, this form I filled out, the first form, take this number, and I copy it right into this number here. And then I add those two numbers together, add those two numbers together. And then I get 20,308.17. So that's the number here. And I can verify this on the statement of adjustments. So this number needs to match the number uh, on this statement of adjustment actually breaks it down. The HST rebate, including the purchase price, is 20,308.17. So if this number matches, you know you got the right number. Okay. A lot of the times, other statement of adjustments, you'll have that number up here. And I'll show you that in another example uh, to follow. So that's for an example on how you fill out the calculations for um, something under 350000 with a net purchase price under $350,000. So the form isn't completed yet, but I'm gonna just take a quick detour here because I want to, because there are some people out there that have bought between three hundred fifty and four hundred fifty thousand dollars. So if your net purchase price is between three hundred fifty thousand to four hundred fifty thousand, I'll show you how to do this calculations right now as well. So in the next example, we're going to be using uh, the net purchase price was four hundred twelve thousand nine hundred eighty dollars and thirty nine cents. So the HST uh, this form here, the GST five twenty four onto a rebate schedule, is pretty much the same. Uh, in terms of the calculations. So you would take the um, total HST, so which would be 53,687.45, and uh, multiply it by eight, and divide it by 13, which gives you 33,038.43. And in this statement of adjustment, they actually broke it down for you. So if you see it this way, you could just simply take this number and just plop it right into here, okay, into A. Uh, for B and C, again, we talked about this already, you just have to take the, uh, the net HST number and throw that into there. And then for D, all you have to do is multiply this number by, multiply this number by 75%. And then if this number is over 24,000, you put 24,000. If it's less than 24,000, you put the number that is less than 24,000. But in this case, it's over 24,000. Um, so you put that number into here. Just as a side note, if your B and C is 400,000, it maxes out. So it's always 400. If, it's, if your B and C is above 400,000, your D should always be 24,000. All right. So now we're going to go into the... Um, GST portion of the calculation. So we're going to go back into the statement of adjustments here. So we're going to take this number, the 53,687.45, multiply it by 5, divide it by 13, and you get 20,649.02, uh, which is the same number. Again, this statement of adjustment broke it down for you in the Riverside Square statement of adjustments it doesn't so you're gonna have to actually do this calculation I just showed you so you put that number into here 20,649.02 for B again we just put the net uh, purchase price value so we put this number simply put it into B and into C okay and then for D what you need to do is you need to multiply this number by 36% and then if this number is above 6,300, you put that, uh, you put 6,300. If it's less than 6,300, you put the number that is less than 6,300. Um, but uh, just as a rule of thumb, if B and C is above 350, uh, it's gonna be 6,300, okay? Then for E, this calculation is a little bit more tricky. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the 450,000 and then you minus the 412, 980.39, which is in B and C. You get this number here. You divide this by 100,000, which is equals this. And then you multiply this number by D, which is 6,300. And then you get 2,332.23. Actually, you round it up to 24. So 2,332.24, uh, okay? 
And then for F, you just simply copy in what was in E. All right. And then um, what you do is you take the number from G. You get the number from G from your previous uh, rebate schedule, 24,000. So you then you add these two numbers together. And then you get uh, 26332.24. Uh, again, we just have to round this up. All right. So that's how you do it for something uh, from 350,000 to 450,000. And now I'm going to show you the final one, which is any pri purchase price, net purchase price above 450,000. So if you have a net purchase price above 450,000, uh, the calculation is actually simple for you because um, again, you're maxing out on your HST rebate uh, portion for the provincial portion, which is 24,000. Okay. You can, again, get this number from your statement of adjustments uh, if you get a total amount uh, for the HST. So at 460000 the total HST would have been 59800 If that's the number that you see on your statement of adjustments, you simply multiply that by 8, divide that by 13, and you get 36800 Okay, you put that number in A. B and C would be the net purchase price. And then for D, it's going to be 24000 because I said, as a rule of thumb, if B and C above 400,000, D is always 24,000. So you've done that form for the uh, GSE portion. It's quite simple as well. Again, let's just assume that you only see the full uh, HST amount, um, which is going to be 13% of 460,000, which is the 590. You just multiply this number by five divided by 13, and then you get $23,000. Uh, that's the number you put into A. This is a net uh, purchase price, so B and C is the same. And then for D, uh, it's going to be 6300 because uh, this times 36% is 8280 but then again, it maxes out 6300 so this will be always be 6300 Again, as rule of thumb, if you're gonna, if this is B and C is above 350, it's always gonna be 6,300. Okay, and then for line E, you just put zero because this is gonna be negative. So if you actually look at the formula again, 450, you know, minus uh, 460,000 is a negative number. You divide it by 100,000. If this number is negative, they want you to put zero. So you put zero in here. Okay, so F becomes zero. And then G, basically, you took it from the previous form is 24,000, and H is uh, 24,000. So just uh, you know, for your information, if you ever purchase something, new construction, and the net HST price is above 450,000, your H is always going to be 24,000. Okay, and that's where it caps out at. A million dollars, $2 million, you know, $700,000, all going to be $24,000, all right? So now let's kind of finalize the form uh, from the first example. So, you know, we left off uh, getting the H value. And then what you need to do now, uh, the rest is quite simple. Um, you just got to fill in section F. So you put your first and your last name. And then uh, you put the date that you're signing. And then you need to, you know, print this out and get this signed. But before you do that, you would fill out section G. So section G is where you put your banking information. Because what Revenue Canada, do, Canada will do is do a direct deposit right into your bank account. So your branch number, institution number, and your account number, and then the name of the account holder. So if you actually look at uh, uh, like a void check, you know, this is uh, how you read it. The transit number, uh, your institution number, and your account number. I'll show you an example of another, like an actual check here. So this is your transit number here. And then this is your um, a bank number here. And then I, I blanked out the account number, but this is where your account number would be. So you take that and you would put that information right into here. Okay. And then you'd get a copy of your void check, uh, which you're going to include in part of the package. All right. So that's it for the forms. You're done the forms. Now we're going to have to package everything together and send it off to uh, Revenue Canada. So what you need to do is um, like, let's just go through on the cover letter. So this is a sample of a cover letter that I've, I've made. So you put the date and then you put uh, Canada Revenue Agency. So there's two actually 
there's two different addresses for uh, Revenue Revenue Canada to make these applications for. So if you actually look at the end of the GST uh, form, you'll see uh, there's two addresses. So if you're living in any of these areas, you send it to the Sudbury Tax Centre. If you're outside of any of these areas, you send it to the Summerside Tax Centre. So just make sure um, you know you get the correct uh, address when you're sending this out. Okay. So in this example, we're living in Toronto Centre, so we're going to be putting uh, the Toronto Centre uh, mailing address. So we put that in here, and but to whom to whom we may concern. Uh, please see all attached, uh, all documents enclosed. So I'm going to make a copy of the first page of the original agreement of purchase and sale. Um, you know, you can send the entire agreement of purchase and sale if you wanted to, but I think you just need to send the first page and any amendments that you've made um, that changes the purchase price. So you want to send that. Uh, you want to send your final statement of adjustments. You got to print that out. You got to send a copy of your residential tenancy agreement with your tenant. One thing to note uh, on the residential tenancy agreement, it has to be for a term of at least one year. If it's not for one year, you might have issues with uh, your rebate. So number four, you're gonna need to throw in uh, your void check, a copy of your void check. And number five and number six, uh, is you're just gonna have to print out those forms I just showed you how to fill out and throw it all into an envelope. And then uh, make sure you have the correct mailing address because there's two different mailing addresses depending on where you live. So you put that all together and send it over to Revenue Canada through mail. Uh, you typically use registered mail. Um, you can use UPS, whatever you need. So once it gets to them, um, typically it takes about two to three months to get your HST rebate back. I actually got my, the fastest I've ever got it back was like 10 days, but I think those days are gone now. Um, so typically, you know, just wait about three months and you should see it hit your account. Um, if you don't, get the rebate back, they'll send you a letter, a rejection letter, or some sort of letter that uh, tells you basically what, what information was missing or why they rejected your application. Uh, if that's you, uh, then you know send them the information that they need. Again, they missed information from me before, uh, but if there's bigger issues, then you're gonna have to consult your uh, accountant or your lawyer in order to address those issues. So hopefully you don't have any of those issues and you get your money back. Uh, like I said, you know, it's it's been, it, it really depends on, uh, I guess, who who's looking at your file. So best of luck. I uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions for me, you know where to reach me, Tim U Remax Real Estate Solutions. I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.